Hello and welcome to the uh, Christmas edition of the Bentley a and Cricket Show. I have myself Adam Kane and Adam Mickelson. Merry Christmas Kane. Yes, uh, Merry Christmas Phil. How was your uh, work Christmas party on the Friday night before uh, round six? I survived. Yeah. That's the main thing. I uh, think I got home. Got a couple of hours sleep and uh, off to King George or off to um, Bentley United's round and yeah. Like the most Survived. Of us, I got there. Yeah. That's the main thing. Yes, yes. But... Uh, one day games this round after uh, a washout on uh, for virtually 99% of the games uh, on the first week. Um, so at a and that involved a lot of playing AC Doocy in the club rooms up until I think about four or five in the morning. But uh, Did you win a few pots or? Uh, no, I broke even. But uh, I know that uh, Ben Zilberstein won a uh, massive pot uh, at one stage. So um, and, and Richard Smith lost a lot of money too. So uh, bad luck, Rich. Oh, Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, we'll move on to uh, ANA's results for the round. And um, in Longview Shield, um, Bentley ANA uh, made 163, chasing Bentley Nightings 8 for 219, so we lost by uh, 56 runs. Um, Adam Mickelson top scoring with 42. Um, but besides that, there weren't uh, many other highlights. Um, Look, we um, we had them 570, mm. and. Um, you know, we we had the momentum, but um, to his credit, I think Brit, uh, Damien Britt came out and made it 70 off about probably 40 balls, mm-hmm. 50 balls, and uh, he's hit a few sixes, and most of them are into the wind. So he can uh, he can bat that kid. And um, uh, Brett Turner started off pretty strong at the start. He got a 40 odd, but um, look, we, we were right in the game, 570, um, got the top order out. But then Chris Manarkis played that uh, anchor role around Britt and made 20 odd himself, and uh, I think there was a few more scores uh, down the uh, bottom of the order, but um, look disappointing, really disappointing mm. because yeah, five for seventy and they end up two twenty off in thirty eight overs. Mm. Uh, it was always going to be hard chasing that, and um, yeah, we lost early wickets and I think we we're three for fourteen, and um, yeah, behind the eight ball from the start. Yeah, Bentley and Knighting have uh, contributed well in uh, some uh, 2020 competitions too. So I guess uh, one day cricket probably suited their game a little bit more. Yeah, but again. Sh- Get to team five or seven. You oh, know what I mean? Exactly there's, um, there's no excuses there, so you know, we should have done a lot better. And uh, Bentley Knighting have, uh, I guess, probably uh, realigned where they were at, um, and they brought Pete Manarkis in after making him captain of the twos earlier in the season, and he took four for 29. And uh, look, they're big fans of the show. Uh, I know I was out there batting, and all I heard was how, how they loved the show, and uh, if uh, you know, we could uh, say cheerio. So. I think, uh, you know, out of the boys at uh, Bentley United. Well done, United. Yeah, yeah good on you. Um, <laughs> moving on to uh, Wilno Shield. Um, Bentley a and had a shocker, basically. Uh, Kingston Heath, we allowed them to make 237, uh, including probably about 100 runs in the last 10 overs. Um, and a and in reply, were 8 for 66 at one stage. Um, and then finished, I think, uh, 8 for 121 at the end there. Um, thanks to Jason Sherlock making the score look semi-respectable, making 34 not out. And Big Grant Jurek made uh, 22 not out with a bat as well, batting at 10. Um, not much to say really, shocking day. Um, Kingston Heath, um, I must say, are a, a club on the rise. Um, they've been one of those clubs that have just built themselves through juniors over the last 10 years. But now um, those kids are now starting to play in the ones and more than half of the team is uh, is made up out, out of those kids, and uh, I tell you what, there uh, there are some exciting cricketers in that. Well, side. you've played a few. What, you played five games now in, in Woolnow. Well, how many? Are they one of the stronger teams in, in Woolnow, and could they push to, to come up next year? They're undefeated in uh, Woolnow Shield, okay. and um, I've, I've mentioned it before. They um, they should win Woolnow Shield, judging on, on from what I've seen at this stage of the season. And if they do actually make it to Longy next year. Um, I, I don't think they'd be out of their depth at all. I think uh, their, their kids are just mm. getting better and better and um, that'll coincide with them uh, facing the stronger challenges in Longmuir. So we'll see how it goes. We're only halfway through the season, so there's a, a lot, yeah. of, uh, lot of time to go between then. Uh, our third 11, tied, needing two runs off the last ball of the game to tie. And Cedric Jantz just calmly hit it straight to uh, deep cover and uh, they ran too easily. So... Um, yeah, uh, 6 for 227, chasing Raven West's 227. Simon White top scored with 61. And Tim Wright, who uh, was designated captain of the fifths earlier in the season, is uh, contributing very well in the um, in the thirds. 
making uh, 58, with uh, James Fergus uh, batting at three, making 43. So, looking at, at the scores and the twos, and obviously there's a lot of guys now making runs in the threes, so you'd suspect come the first game up to Christmas there'll be a few changes, and it'd be good to see guys like Tim Wright and James Fergus and these guys get into the twos, and because look, they've got runs in their belts, so uh, oh, it seems good. like you're lacking runs in the twos. Absolutely, the we've played six games and our highest score is something like 160, so mm. uh, our second 11 desperately uh, needs some informed batsmen, there's no question about that. Um, about the ANA's E grade team, our fourth 11 are undefeated and uh, are six zip. Uh, we defeated Dingley, and um, I don't have the scores on me, but uh, a couple of highlights that I am aware of is that uh, Ben Titty made uh, 63 top scoring. Um, I think you mentioned Al Richardson made 30 odd as 37, well. 37, yeah. Yep, and Hamish made 20 odd. And with the ball, uh, ANA's own Lamar lookalike, Steve Galileos, uh, took four for 16. So um, the other boys at Kajagoogoo would be wrapped with that. And I think um, Alex Cross got another 20 odd not out as well. So there's three under 16s that are, you know, really putting some um, yeah, scores on the board and taking good wickets. So that's great. Excellent, excellent to see. Our fifth 11 in F grade. Uh, Made nine for 145, uh, thanks to uh, Luke Forrest, who's captaining the fifths at the moment. Top scored with 58, and um, you know 145, one of those borderline ga- uh, scores in one day cricket. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to be, they rolled Chelsea Heights for 29, so they uh, won by 116 runs. Um, with Mark Smith again, another under 16, mm. taking three for nine. Uh, Tommy Fitzpatrick uh, make uh, bowling and getting three for ten. And I think uh, James Coyne, who uh, worked his way from the sixth last game into the fifth, well done, took two wickets as well. And um, that's the fifth 11. The sixth 11 um, in I grade, uh, the the match of the co-tenants of King George, uh, East Bentley Central, even though it was played at uh, Tucker Road, but um, East Bentley Central, seven for 191, uh, defeated Bentley A&A, six for 171. Unfortunately, couldn't make the runs. Uh, Jason Crow made 56, and uh, his partner in crime, Mark Hawthorne, making 44. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. And in the um, one day grade, A&A made the, uh, the, the uh, blunder of actually uh, calling up uh, LePage Park on the Thursday night and uh, mentioning that uh, we probably don't have the numbers because we're used to playing on Sundays. And um, as a result, um, LePage Park uh, got the walkover. And lo and behold, on the Saturday, it was a washout for everyone else. And uh, everyone else basically got three points except for A&A. So, oh well, that's cricket. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, so, I guess just, just wanted to uh, touch on um, a couple of things within the club before we move on to uh, Long, New Sh- uh, Long New Shield highlights. Um, but uh, on um, Thursday last week, we uh, launched the opening, even though we've been using it for a month, but we launched the uh, opening of our third cricket net, um, which was which was a great evening because uh, we um, invited uh, Nick Stakos from the Glen Ira Council of Tucker Ward, uh, as well as uh, Rob Hudson, who's the, the state member for Bentley, and uh, along with um, some Victorian uh, Shield cricketers in Aidan Blizzard and Jason Armberger, who used to play for Victoria, uh, we launched the net, we uh, did a uh, bit of a media campaign and I think uh, there'll be a write-up of it in the leader this week, so um, great stuff and um, we'd like to thank uh, Al Richardson and Gino Fulco for their efforts in uh, um, A, assisting in getting the funding and, and B, uh, bringing the, uh, the right, I guess, people uh, to the club and um, they were quite impressed actually with, their, with, their, um, with, uh, with the club. Well, 